Good morning, children of God. Welcome to worship. Alina and I just got back from vacation yesterday at about four, no, two o'clock in the afternoon. So, uh, so we're still getting our sea legs underneath us, but uh, it's good to be back here with you and a beautiful day like this uh, to worship in the midst of God's creation. Yesterday, as I hope you all know, it was the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and the tragedy and the violence that took place on that day. And we sure remember that as Christians and remember those who not only were killed in the building, but those who ran to serve those who had been lost. Um, and many of them lost their lives to deal with the consequences of that. So we definitely keep them in our prayers as well, but as the people of God, we also remember that that kind of violence is a daily occurrence within our world, and that we yearn for the day when God's kingdom will come, and indeed that kind of violence and that uh, division that's a part of our world will give way to God's grace and God's love for all of us. As part of being a part of that justice that's breaking into the world, we have a few things. Um, we are having our uh, God's work, our hands Sunday today, and uh, instead of going out and being with people because of the pandemic, we are uh, collecting items for, uh, for our community and indeed for the world over the next three weeks or so. Uh, we have seafarer bags that will be given out in New York as part of the seafarer ministry of the ELCA. We have school supplies that we're collecting. Some of them will go to our local school districts. The supplies that aren't supplied by the school, and the teachers have to do that on their own. So we're going to be helping them out. We are going to be collecting items for school bags that will be going overseas as well. And also in our Sunbury Together, uh, group with our bakery, uh, we give out uh, toiletries and personal care items. And uh, so we're collecting for that as well. We usually have at least 70, 60 or 70 people that come to that. And it really is a, a pleasure to work with our, um, our neighbors. So keep that in mind. And uh, if you don't have items today, or if you want to bring more items next week, please feel free to do that. Uh, next week, we will be confirming two of our guests. Uh, it's been a long journey during the pandemic, uh, but we finally got to the point where they're ready to confess their faith in what God has done for them in the waters of baptism. So I hope you'll be able to come and take part with that very special Sunday. Uh, we don't know if we'll be inside or outside uh, yet. The council will be discussing that and making that decision. We do know that obviously the weather um, is changing and will be harder to be outside. 
but it is safer. So that's an issue that we'll need to be discussing and talking about in uh, the weeks to come. We are on our regular schedule now, 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, one service. And hopefully that will bring us together as the body of Christ to worship all together uh, as we come before our Lord. So keep that in mind at this point. Um, again, I personally want to welcome Jonathan to our staff. I know he was here last week, but I wasn't. So I wanted to take that opportunity. And uh, I think you have something to play as we begin worship. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who teach, whose teachings is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We graze among abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all our sins and a love that is meant to be shared. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Christ welcomes you here today with open arms. Christ calls you by name, calls you to follow. Christ knows you by heart, washes you with love. We are indeed blessed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth your salvation. And by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the war of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. You may be here. The first reading comes from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ears to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I do not hide my face from insults or spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let them stand together with me. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who knows me. Declare me judge. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly Psalm 116. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon you. my life. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. My God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent and is far away in my Savior. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. The second reading comes from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide our we guide their full bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by the small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a word, as the world of inequity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. 
for every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and sea creatures, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, that no one can tame the tongue of reckless evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening from fresh and blackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine fig? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Christ suffered for sins once for all, a righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you. According to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he strictly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but Turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd to his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in the adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and of the holy angels. The gospel, the good news of our Lord. Praise to the Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, the risen one from God. Have you ever noticed that when we meet someone for the first time, we walk away with first impressions of who they are and what they might be like? I mean, you may have heard about a person from someone else before you meet them. But when you begin to see them for yourself, sometimes your impressions are reinforced by the way that they look, by the accent that they have or their ethnicity. Maybe the words that they choose in the conversation that you share or what they talk about. Maybe it's that you judge them by the people that they hang around, where they work or where they live, what they do or what they don't do. Through this process, we begin to see people in certain ways, fit them into certain categories of people that we have. 
people that are religious, people that are not, people that are like us, people that are not, people who are different, people who are not. We begin to think that somehow we know them, who they are. We begin to think of them as a good person or a bad influence, a funny and caring person or a loud and obnoxious person, someone who we want to get to know, and someone who we may never see again. That's okay. We don't like the unknown as human beings. To not know about a person when we're in their presence. And so we kind of make up our own understanding of who they are. By maybe their past experiences. We know the people we like. And so we think that we know this person. That maybe we just met. Of course we don't until we fully understand their history, their feelings, and the aspirations that they have for their life and their family and for the world. Jesus bursts in on the scene one morning with John in the River Jordan amongst a whole bunch of people. And then he disappears just as quickly into the wilderness until John gets arrested. Then he comes preaching repentance and the kingdom of God being at hand. And he brings, begins his ministry by calling people to follow him, fresh from fishing boats that had just landed with their couch. To follow him as he casts out demons and heals the sick and reaches out to those who are outcasts. He sends a man home who had to be carried there by four of his friends because he was paralyzed. But he sends him home walking. He adds a tax collector to the fishermen. I wonder what people thought. While the religious leaders were rejecting him because they did not live up, he did not live up to their understanding of the law and of God's will. At one point, they saw Jesus not have time for his mother and for his brothers, and yet leave the area to follow a father home because his daughter was sick and raises him from the, her from the dead. He's in the boat with the experienced fishermen, and as they cling for their lives to that boat, Jesus simply steals, steals the sea. Can you imagine what people must have thought when they first saw Jesus? When they heard about the things that he was doing and, and maybe went out to see him out in the wilderness and began to hear him talk, and to heal people and to feed the 5,000. They were amazed at the words that he used and the power that they had to heal. He was rejected by those who had power in the religious well and didn't want to share it. He was astonished at the things that he could do and the people that he chose to have follow him. I wonder what the people thought about Jesus. Were they willing to look deeper into who Jesus was, or were they just caught up in the moment and the things that he was doing and the, and the things that he said? It's hard to look past those first impressions, isn't it? As Jesus begins to set his face towards Jerusalem, he asks his disciples in our gospel lesson today, who do people say that I am? Are they seeing more than just the healings? Are they hearing more than just the feedings? Who do they think that I who do they think I am? And why did I come? And the disciples tell them the words that they have heard. Well, some people think you're John the Baptist who's come back from the dead because you do things like John the Baptist and you say things like John did. 
Some people think that you're alive. The one who did mighty miracles to heal people. Indeed, brought the word of God to the people of God. And others say you're one of the disciples from of old who's come to speak God's word to us here and now. Of course, the disciples could have talked about what the Pharisees thought of Jesus, the false prophet leading people astray, getting in the way of what God is doing within the world. But they seem to fit Jesus into categories that they already knew. The prophets, Elijah, John the Baptist, and failed to see how new Jesus was for the world. And then he turns to his disciples and he says, you know me the best of all. You have been listening for two years and watching everything that I've done. You've been called to follow me. Who do you say that you are? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, like no other. The one chosen by God and sent by God. I give Peter a lot of credit there because he sees something new in Jesus, not just something that fits into the categories that God has used before, like no other. Yet when Jesus starts talking about what the Messiah means, he can't stop listening. Because it's taking him in a direction that he doesn't want to go. Jesus betrayed, suffering, crucified, even though he's watching what God is doing through Jesus, he can't go in that direction. And so as Jesus heads to Jerusalem, talking about serving him and giving up your life for him how he's going to die and be raised again. The crowds begin to dwindle. He's not fitting into the categories anymore that they were hoping for. I think that's so fascinating at this point in Jesus' ministry when he begins to shift what he's doing and what he's saying and how the people respond to them. And when he comes to the disciples and asks two questions, you know, what do people say that I am? Who do people say that I am and who do you say that I am? And I think this time in human history when we're dealing with so much injustice and so much division within our world and, and so many things that people are, are pursuing that, that I just don't understand, that those two questions are important for us to answer as well. Um, questions that may be rephased, phrased just a little bit. But I want to raise before you now. And just so you know, I don't have any ringers out there to give me answers, so it's up to you guys. <laughs> as the church, as Zion Lutheran Church, as the church in general, who do people say that we are? What are we about? What do we do? What do you think people, when you think about your friends and your family and people who go to church and people who don't go to church, what, what kind of words do they use for the things that we do here? Any ideas? Helping neighbors. Helping neighbors. Okay. Good. I hope they do. <laughs> I hope they see that. Good. What else? Worshiping God? Okay, good. Yeah, hopefully they know we worship. What? That's right. That, that's their thing, right? If they want to do their thing in their place, good for them. Okay, good. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have a big impact outside of the church. Okay, do your thing. Yeah, I think people do think that. What else? You're the, you're the big church, yes, uh, with the big building, right? Uh, everyone knows where Zion Lutheran Church is, right? It's Fifth and Market Street. At least that's what they think. 
Okay. What else? We're in the community. All right, so we're not just in the building. Think about your friends, think about your neighbors, think about people in your own family. When you tell them you're going to church, what do they think you're going to do? Worship God, obviously. Do whatever. Okay. Alex? Sing. What? Sing. Sing. Okay. Yes, we think. We sing, right? How many people sing anymore? Uh, I don't do the Rotarians still sing. But um, anyway, we sing. Yeah. We're the one with the guard. Okay. So people are seeing, at least some people are seeing the things that we're doing. The garden, out in the community. They, they know that we gather in there to sing, to worship God. Whatever we do, that's up to them. You know, we're, <laughs> we're going to do our own thing or that's not for us. Okay, good. Um, yeah, when, when, people, when people look at us, um, are all of those uh, ideas, are all of those impressions based on actually what we do? Or are some of them perceived notions that people have? I know some of our brothers and sisters wonder why we do the liturgy what we do. We're so formal, we're so you know locked in. Uh, why, why do we do that? Those kinds of, of issues. And and I think you're right, Barry. I, I think some people don't even ask the question. Doesn't matter. As long as they keep it in the church and don't go out on the street and uh, and try to talk to you. Too. Second question: Who do you say that we are? You know us best as members of the congregation, as visitors here today. Who do you say that we are as the people of God? Servants, servants of, okay, yeah, servants of everyone, yes, followers of Jesus Christ, absolutely, what, helpers, being willing to help, to reach out to those who are around us, yeah. As the new guy? As the new guy, yes. This is one of the most loving congregations I accept. All right, loving congregation. We didn't hire him because he would say <laughs> Good. I, I, I think that's important to have impressions from, from other people that are just coming into the congregation. Um, you see the difference, though, between the two questions? What do people perceive of us and how we perceive ourselves? Because we need to know what we are about. And I love the words, you know, helping and serving and loving. That's what we're about. Not just the singing, not just the liturgy, not just the worshiping of God. We come together so we can be shaped by the grace and love of God. And indeed, then be sent out into the world as Jesus sent his disciples. And think about those words that you came up with and, and the words that you mentioned in your own heart. Are those important in our world today? Think about the world, think about our country, think about our community. It's important to serve, to love, to help. Yeah. That is the very nature of the body of Christ. Because it's the very nature of Christ and we follow him. As I think about uh, the weeks and the months and the years ahead, who knows? what we'll face. But we'll face it as the body of Christ 
in this place. Shame and forgiveness and hope and peace. And share that with one another. I know it, by the way, of all of those things, Jesus wants to remind us that we are his. His people. Set free not to conform to the world and the world's standards. Not to do churchy things. But to be loving people. Followers of Jesus Christ. of Christ throughout the world, we confess with all of our brothers and sisters our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise we pray for the church, the world, and all they need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church, that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy. Reading yeah. God, you brought life into being and called it good bring new creations to land devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters. 
restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex needs of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Transforming God, you announce, you, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Today, especially, be with those members of our congregation that are in need of prayer. Today, we especially pray for Ron, Carol, Jeff, Samson, Joy, Joan, Kim, Bo, Sue, Darwin, and those that we remain quietly upon our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Forming God, you gather this community together, shape our communal life that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Redeeming God, you accompany your people to every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And gracious Lord, we remember all those who face injustice within our world of tragedy, especially those who died and have been affected by 9-11 20 years ago. We pray for all the violence that is happening within our world and ask that you would raise up your church and other faithful people to fight against it and indeed to seek peace for all. And Lord, we pray that in the midst of a world that doesn't quite understand what church is about, that you would help us to be transformed. So we're not just one more thing to be fit into the categories of this world that might be known by your grace and your love and your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. God's peace be with you. Make sure that you have your elements for our Holy Communion in, and we will begin the liturgy with um, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending
mighty and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The great love you sent to us, Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, my blood, which is given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension. We await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share in this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, following our service, we are going to have a light lunch. You're welcome to stay. Please do. Uh, we'll be setting up some tables to so just hang out for a little bit and you can find the place and the food will join us out here. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
in peace knowing this, the living word dwells in you. Amen. Amen.